1. Before work starts in a confined space, how should the air be checked? A. Someone should go in and sniff the air. B. The air should be tested with a meter. C. Someone should look around to see if there is toxic gas. D. The air should be tested with a match to see if it stays alight. The correct answer is B. The air should be tested with a meter. Question 2. When planning possible work in a confined space, what should be the first consideration? A. How long the job will take. B. To avoid the need for operatives to enter the space. C. How many operatives will be required? D. Personal protective equipment. PPE. The correct answer is B. To avoid the need for operatives to enter the space. Question 3. You are working on a flat roof. What is the best way to stop yourself falling over the edge? A. Put a large warning sign at the edge of the roof. B. Ask someone to watch you and shout when you get too close to the edge. C. Protect the edge with a guard rail and tow board. D. Use red and white tape to mark the edge. The correct answer is C. Protect the edge with a guard rail and tow board. Question 4. You find that you cannot do a job as the method statement says you should. What do you do? A. Make up your own way of doing the job. B. Do not start work until you have talked with your supervisor. C. Ask your workmates how they think you should do the job. D. Contact the health and safety executive HSE. The correct answer is B. Do not start work until you have talked with your supervisor. Question 5. Which of the following precautions should be taken to prevent a dumper from falling into an excavation when tipping material into it? A. Dumpers kept 5 meters away from the excavation. B. Stop blocks provided parallel to the trench appropriate to the vehicle's wheel size. C. Dumper drivers required to judge the distance carefully or given stop signals by another person. D. Cones or sign are directed to indicate safe tipping point. The correct answer is B. Stop blocks provided parallel to the trench appropriate to the vehicle's wheel size. Question 6. Which one of the following factors must be considered when providing first aid facilities on site? A. The cost of first aid equipment. B. The hazards, risks and nature of the work carried out. C. The difficulty in finding time to purchase the necessary equipment. D. The space in the site office to store the necessary equipment. The correct answer is B. The hazards, risks and nature of the work carried out. Question 7. Why should you try to use battery-powered tools rather than electrical ones? A. They are cheaper to run. B. They will not give you an electric shock. C. They will not give you hand-arm vibration. D. They do not need to be tested or serviced. The correct answer is B. They will not give you an electric shock. Question 8. The monitoring and controlling of health and safety procedures can be either proactive or reactive. Proactive monitoring means A. Ensuring that staff always do the work that they have been instructed to do safely. B. Deciding how to prevent accidents similar to those that have already occurred. C. Looking at the work to be done, what could go wrong and how it could be done safely. D. Checking that all staff read and understand all health and safety notices. The correct answer is C. Looking at the work to be done, what could go wrong and how it could be done safely. Question 9. On building sites, the recommended safe voltage for electrical equipment is Mark 1 answer A. 12 volts B. 24 volts C. 110 volts D. 230 volts The correct answer is C. 110 volts Question 10. How should cylinders containing liquefied petroleum gas LPG be stored on site? A. In a locked cellar with clear warning signs B. In an locked external compound at least 3 meters from any oxygen cylinders. C. Within a secure storage container. D. Covered by a tarpaulin to shield the compressed cylinder from sunlight. The correct answer is B. In an locked external compound at least 3 meters from any oxygen cylinders. Question 11. You are working in a confined space when you notice the smell of bad eggs. This smell is a sign of A. Hydrogen sulfide. B. Oxygen. C. Methane. D. Carbon dioxide. The correct answer is A. Hydrogen sulfide. Question 12. What danger is created by excessive oxygen in a confined space? A. Increase in breathing rate of workers. B. Increased flammability of combustible materials. C. Increased working time inside work area. D. False sense of security. The correct answer is B. 
Increased flammability of combustible materials. Question 13. You're in a deep trench. A lorry backs up to the trench and the engine is left running. What should you do? A. Put on ear defenders to cut out the engine noise. B. Ignore the problem, the lorry will soon drive away. C. See if there is a toxic gas meter in the trench. D. Get out of the trench quickly. The correct answer is D. Get out of the trench quickly. Question 14. What must happen each time a shift starts work in an excavation? Mark one answer. A. Someone must go in and sniff the air to see if it is safe. B. Competent person must inspect the excavation. C. Supervisor should stay in the excavation for the first hour. D. Supervisor should watch from the top for the first hour. The correct answer is B. Competent person must inspect the excavation. Question 15. You're about to start a job. How will you know if it needs a permit to work? A. Other workers will tell you. B. The Health and Safety Executive HSE will tell you. C. You will not be allowed to start until the permit to work has been issued. D. You don't need to know, as permits to work only affect managers. The correct answer is C. You will not be allowed to start until the permit to work has been issued. Question 16. You are working in a confined space. If the permit to work runs out before you can finish the job, you should A. Carry on working until the job is finished. B. Hand the permit over to the next shift. C. Ask your supervisor to change the date on the permit. D. Leave the confined space before the permit runs out. The correct answer is D. Leave the confined space before the permit runs out. Question 17. If you have to work at height in a cherry picker over or near to deep water, which following item of personal protective equipment, PP, must you be wearing? Mark 1 answer. A. Wellington boots. B. Life jacket. C. Full face respirator. D. Full body harness. The correct answer is B. Life jacket. Question 18. A mobile tower scaffold must not be used on. Mark 1 answer. A. Soft or uneven ground. B. A paved patio. C. An asphalt road. D. A smooth concrete path. The correct answer is A. Soft or uneven ground. Question 19. You need to use a mobile tower scaffold. The wheel brakes do not work. What should you do? A. Use some wood to wedge the wheels and stop them moving. B. Do not use the tower. C. Only use the tower if the floor is level. D. Get someone to hold the tower while you use it. The correct answer is B. Do not use the tower. Question 20. A crane has to do a difficult lift. The signaler asks you to help, but you are not trained in plant signals. What should you do? A. Politely refuse and explain you don't know how to signal. B. Start giving signals to the crane driver. C. Only help if the signaler really can't manage alone. D. Ask the signaler to show you what signals to use. The correct answer is A. Politely refuse and explain you don't know how to signal. Question 21. The minimum level of first aid cover required at any workplace is an appointed person. Which of the following would you expect the appointed person to carry out? A. Provide most of the care normally carried out by a first aider. B. Provide all of the care normally provided by a first aider. C. Contact the emergency services and direct them to the scene of an accident. D. Only apply splints to broken bones. The correct answer is C. Contact the emergency services and direct them to the scene of an accident. Question 22. Why may a young person be more at risk of having accidents? A. Legislation does not apply to anyone under 18 years of age. B. They are usually left to work alone to gain experience. C. They have less experience and may not recognize danger or understand fully what could go wrong. D. There is no legal duty to provide them with personal protective equipment. PP. The correct answer is C. They have less experience and may not recognize danger or understand fully what could go wrong. Question 23. You need to use a 230 volt item of equipment. How should you protect yourself from an electric shock? A. Use a generator. B. Put up safety screens around you. C. Use a portable RCD, residual current device. D. Wear rubber boots and gloves. The correct answer is C. Use a portable RCD, residual current device. Question 24. You should use a RCD, residual current device, with 230 volt tools because it A. Lowers the voltage. B. 
Quickly cuts off the power if there is a fault. C. Makes the tool run at a safe speed. D. Saves energy and lowers costs. The correct answer is B. Quickly cuts off the power if there is a fault. Question 25. Which of these materials would you use a water fire extinguisher on? A. Paper, wood, textiles and solid materials. B. Flammable liquids such as gasoline. C. Combustible metals. D. Live electrical fires. The correct answer is A. Paper, wood, textiles and solid materials. Question 26. Before planning for anyone to enter a confined space, following me. Principles of prevention. What should be the first consideration of the manager or supervisor? A. Has the atmosphere in the confined space been tested? B. Has a safe means of access and egress been established? C. Is there an alternative method of doing the work? D. Have all who intend to enter the confined space been properly trained? The correct answer is C. Is there an alternative method of doing the work? Question 27. Why is it important that people are trained before they are allowed to go into a confined space? A. Confined spaces never contain breathable air. B. The conditions inside a confined space may be harmful to health. C. Confined spaces are only found on house building sites. D. Confined spaces always contain flammable or explosive gases. The correct answer is B. The conditions inside a confined space may be harmful to health. Question 28. Tools and materials can easily fall from a scaffold platform. What is the best way to protect the people below? A. Make sure they are wearing safety helmets. B. Tell them you will be working above them. C. Use brick guards to stop any items falling below. D. Tell the people below to stop work and clear the area. The correct answer is C. Use brick guards to stop any items falling below. Question 29. You are working in an excavation. If you see the side supports move, you should A. Keep watching to see if they move again. B. Make sure that you and others get out quickly. C. Do nothing as the sides move all the time. D. Work in another part of the excavation. The correct answer is B. Make sure that you and others get out quickly. Question 30. You're in a confined space when the gas alarm sounds. You have no respiratory protective equipment. RPE. What should you do? A. Switch off the alarm. B. Get out of the confined space quickly. C. Carry on working but do not use electrical tools. D. Carry on working but take plenty of breaks in the fresh air. The correct answer is B. Get out of the confined space quickly. Question 31. You need to walk through sludge at the bottom of a confined space. Which of these is not a hazard? A. The release of oxygen. B. The release of toxic gases. C. Slips and trips. D. The release of flammable gases. The correct answer is A. The release of oxygen. Question 32. Which category does titanium and aluminium materials fall under? A. Category C. B. Category A. C. Category F. D. Category D. The correct answer is D. Category D. Question 33. If you have to work in a hearing protection zone, you must. A. Not make any noise. B. Wear the correct hearing protection at all times. C. Take hearing protection with you in case you need to use it. D. Wear hearing protection if the noise gets too loud for you. The correct answer is B. Wear the correct hearing protection at all times. Question 34. If there is sludge at the bottom of a confined space, you should A. Go in and then step into the sludge to see how deep it is. B. Throw something into the sludge to see how deep it is. C. Put on a disposable face mask before you go in. D. Have the correct respiratory protective equipment, RPE, and training before you go in. The correct answer is D. Have the correct respiratory protective equipment, RPE, and training before you go in. Question 35. You are in a deep trench and start to feel dizzy. What should you do? A. Get out, let your head clear and then go back in again. B. Carry on working and hope that the feeling will go away. C. Make sure that you and any others get out quickly and report it. D. Sit down in the trench and take a rest. The correct answer is C. Make sure that you and any others get out quickly and report it. Question 36. When must an accident be recorded in the site's accident book? A. Only when an accident causes injury to a worker while at work. B. 
Only when a person is injured will be off work for more than three days. C. Only when an accident causes damage to plants or equipment. D. Only when a person breaks a major bone or is concussed. The correct answer is A. Only when an accident causes injury to a worker while at work. Question 37. Which of these does not have to be recorded in the accident book? A. Your national insurance number. B. The date and time of your accident. C. Details of your injury. D. Your home address. The correct answer is A. Your national insurance number. Question 38. When must you record an accident in the accident book? A. If you are injured in any way. B. Only if you have to be off work. C. Only if you have suffered a broken bone. D. Only if you have to go to hospital. The correct answer is A. If you are injured in any way. Question 39. A confined space is defined as A. Having limited way out. B. Not designed for continuous occupancy. C. Open space. D. All of the above. The correct answer is A. Having limited way out. Question 40. In an emergency in assembly point is E. A. Site manager's office. B. Place of the incident or accident. C. Welfare facilities. D. Specified place to gather after an evacuation. The correct answer is D. Specified place to gather after an evacuation. Question 41. You can help prevent accidents by A. Reporting unsafe working conditions. B. Becoming a first aider. C. Knowing where the first aid kit is kept. D. Knowing how to get help quickly. The correct answer is A. Reporting unsafe working conditions. Question 42. What is a toolbox talk? A. A short training session on a particular safety topic. B. A talk that tells you where to buy tools. C. Your first training session when you arrive on site. D. A sales talk given by a tool supplier. The correct answer is A. A short training session on a particular safety topic. Question 43. How would you expect to find out about site health and safety rules when you first arrive on site? A. During site induction. B. In a letter sent to your home. C. By reading your employer's health and safety policy. D. By asking others on the site. The correct answer is A. During site induction. Question 44. When is it advisable to take precautions to prevent the fall of persons, plant or materials into an excavation? A. At all times. B. When the excavation is 2 meters or more deep. C. When the excavation is 1.2 meters or more deep. D. When there is a risk from an underground cable or other service. The correct answer is A. At all times. Question 45. You need to stack materials on a working platform. What is the best way to stop him falling over the tow board? A. Fit brick guards or netting to the edge. B. Put a warning sign on the stack. C. Build the stack so that it leans away from the edge. D. Cover the stack with polythene. The correct answer is A. Fit brick guards or netting to the edge. Question 46. When using a CO2 fire extinguisher you should be aware that the nozzle will become A. Very hot. B. Very cold. C. Warm. D. Slightly cold. The correct answer is B. Very cold. Question 47. Which color coding does foam fire extinguishers fall under? A. Red. B. Blue. C. Cream. D. Black. The correct answer is C. Cream. Question 48. The color coding for a dry powder fire extinguisher is A. Blue. B. Cream. C. Red. D. Black. The correct answer is A. Blue. Question 49. Which two types of fire extinguishers should you avoid using in confined spaces? Choose two answers. A. Dry powder. B. Water. C. CO2. D. Foam. E. Wet chemical. The correct answer is A and C. Dry powder and CO2. Question 50. Which of these fire extinguisher is most suitable for electrical fires? A. CO2. B. Water. C. Wet chemical. D. Foam. The correct answer is A. CO2. Question 51. Which of the following is not a class of material? A. Wood. B. Paper. C. Propane. D. Plastic. The correct answer is C. Propane. Question 52. You are in a confined space. If the level of oxygen drops. A. Your hearing could be affected. B. 
There is a high risk of fire or explosion. C. You could become unconscious. D. You might get dehydrated. The correct answer is C. You could become unconscious. Question 53. Which types of fire extinguishers were designed specifically for tackling Class F fires? A. CO2 fire extinguishers. B. Dry powder fire extinguishers. C. Wet chemical fire extinguishers. D. Water fire extinguishers. The correct answer is C. Wet chemical fire extinguishers. Question 54. Besides a CO2 fire extinguisher, which type of fire extinguisher can you use on electrical fires? A. Wet chemical fire extinguisher. B. Foam fire extinguisher. C. Dry powder fire extinguisher. D. Water fire extinguisher. The correct answer is C. Dry powder fire extinguisher. Question 55. The main cause of death when people have to work in a confined space is A. The presence of methane gas. B. Inadequate emergency rescue plan and equipment in place. C. The disturbance of sludge. D. Too much oxygen. The correct answer is B. Inadequate emergency rescue plan and equipment in place. Question 56. You are in a confined space. If the level of oxygen drops. A. There is a high risk of fire or explosion. B. Your hearing could be affected. C. You could become unconscious. D. You might get dehydrated. The correct answer is C. You could become unconscious. Question 57. You're in a deep trench and start to feel dizzy. What should you do? A. Carry on working and hope that the feeling will go away. B. Sit down in the trench and take a rest. C. Get out, let your head clear and then go back in again. D. Make sure that you and any others get out quickly and report it. The correct answer is D. Make sure that you and any others get out quickly and report it. Question 58. You are working in a confined space when you notice the smell of bad eggs. This smell is a sign of A. Oxygen. B. Hydrogen sulfide. C. Methane. D. CO2. The correct answer is B. Hydrogen sulfide. Question 59. You are working in an excavation. If you see the side supports move, you should A. Do nothing as the sides move all the time. B. Work in another part of the excavation. C. Keep watching to see if they move again. D. Make sure that you and others get out quickly. The correct answer is D. Make sure that you and others get out quickly. Question 60. If you see a dumper being driven too fast you should A. Keep out of its way and report the matter. B. Try to catch the dumper and speak to the driver. C. Report the matter to the police. D. Do nothing, dumpers are allowed to go above the site speed limit. The correct answer is A. Keep out of its way and report the matter. Question 61. You need to walk through sludge at the bottom of a confined space. Which of these is not a hazard? A. The release of oxygen. B. The release of toxic gases. C. Slips and trips. D. The release of flammable gases. The correct answer is A. The release of oxygen. Question 62. Work in a confined space usually needs three safety documents, a risk assessment, a method statement and A. A company health and safety policy. B. A cost quotation. C. A written contract for the work. D. A permit to work. Enter. The correct answer is D. A permit to work. Enter. Question 63. What is the main reason for having a person positioned immediately outside a confined space whilst work is taking place inside it? A. To get the rescue plan underway in an emergency. B. To supervise the work taking place inside the confined space. C. To check compliance with the method statement. D. To carry out a risk assessment for the work. The correct answer is A. To get the rescue plan underway in an emergency. Question 64. You are in a deep trench. A lorry backs up to the trench and the engine is left running. What should you do? A. Ignore the problem, the lorry will soon drive away. B. Try to give hand signals to the driver. C. See if there is a toxic gas meter in the trench. D. Get out of the trench quickly. The correct answer is D. Get out of the trench quickly. Question 65. You are working in a confined space. If the permit to work runs out before you can finish the job, you should A. Carry on working until the job is finished. B. Hand the permit over to the next shift. C. Ask your supervisor for a new permit. D. Carry on working until the job is finished. The correct answer is C. Ask your supervisor for a new permit. 
Question 66. Why is it important that people are trained before they are allowed to go into a confined space? A. The conditions inside a confined space may be harmful to health. B. Confined spaces always contain flammable or explosive gases. C. Confined spaces are only found on house building sites. D. Confined spaces never contain breathable air. The correct answer is A. The conditions inside a confined space may be harmful to health. Question 67. Which of these is not a danger that is associated with confined spaces? A. Fire and explosions. B. Unhygienic surfaces. C. Liquids and solids. D. Oxygen deficiency. The correct answer is B. Unhygienic surfaces. Question 68. Which of these would not be defined as a confined space? A. Ductwork. B. Open top chambers. C. Cold storage rooms. D. A portable food vendor cart. The correct answer is D. A portable food vendor cart. Question 69. What is the main objective of carrying out an accident investigation? A. To find out who is at fault. B. To find out the causes in order to prevent it happening again. C. To find out the cost of any damage that occurred. D. To record what injuries were sustained. The correct answer is B. To find out the causes in order to prevent it happening again. Question 70. What is the biggest cause of long-term health issues in the construction industry? A. Being struck by a vehicle. B. Breathing in hazardous dust and fumes. C. Loud noise. D. Slipping and tripping. The correct answer is B. Breathing in hazardous dust and fumes. Question 71. If you use a power tool to cut or grind materials, why must the dust be collected and not allowed to get into the air? A. Most dust can be harmful if breathed in. B. The tool will go faster if the dust is collected. C. To save time and avoid having to clear up the mess. D. You do not need a machine guard if the dust is collected. The correct answer is A. Most dust can be harmful if breathed in. Question 72. You have been asked to do some work that will create dust. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Start work. No controls are needed as dust cannot cause serious harm or injury. B. Use equipment to eliminate or reduce the dust and wear the correct personal protective equipment. PP. C. Work for short periods at a time. D. You should not do the work. Dust is highly dangerous. The correct answer is B. Use equipment to eliminate or reduce the dust and wear the correct personal protective equipment. PP. Question 73. Being exposed to which of these items will not cause lung infections or diseases? A. Bird feces. B. Strong odors. C. Asbestos fibers. D. Silica in dust form. The correct answer is B. Strong odors. Question 74. When is site transport allowed to drive along a pedestrian route? A. During meal breaks. B. If it is the shortest route. C. Only if necessary and if all pedestrians are excluded. D. Only if the vehicle has a flashing yellow light. The correct answer is C. Only if necessary and if all pedestrians are excluded. Question 75. A large fire has been reported. You have not been trained to use fire extinguishers. You should. A. Put away all your tools and then go to the assembly point. B. Report to the site office and then go home. C. Go straight to the assembly point. D. Leave work for the day. The correct answer is C. Go straight to the assembly point. Question 76. If you discover a fire, the first thing you should do is A. Put your tools away. B. Finish what you are doing, if it is safe to do so. C. Try to put out the fires. D. Raise the alarm. The correct answer is D. Raise the alarm. Question 77. How would you expect to be told about the site traffic rules? A. During site induction. B. By a health and safety executive HSE inspector. C. By a note on a notice board. D. In a letter sent to your home. The correct answer is A. During site induction. Question 78. You see a driver refueling an excavator. Most of the diesel is spilling onto the ground. What is the first thing you should do? A. Tell your supervisor the next time you see them. B. Tell the driver immediately. C. Look for a spillage kit immediately. D. Do nothing, the diesel will eventually seep into the ground. The correct answer is B. Tell the driver immediately. Question 79. An excavator has just stopped work. Liquid is dripping and forming a small pool under the back of the machine. 
What could this mean? A. It is normal for fluids to vent after the machine stops. B. The machine is hot so the diesel has expanded and overflowed. C. Someone put too much diesel into the machine before it started work. D. The machine has a leak and could be unsafe. The correct answer is D. The machine has a leak and could be unsafe. Question 80. An excavation must be supported if A. It is more than 1.2 meters deep. B. It is more than 5 meters deep. C. There is a risk of the sides falling in. D. Any buried surfaces cross the excavation. The correct answer is C. There is a risk of the sides falling in. Question 81. A forklift truck is blocking the way to where you want to go on site. It is lifting materials onto a scaffold. What should you do? A. Only walk under the raised load if you are wearing a safety helmet. B. Catch the driver's attention and then walk under the raised load. C. Start to run so that you are not under the load for very long. D. Wait or go around but never walk under a raised load. The correct answer is D. Wait or go around but never walk under a raised load. Question 82. You must not walk behind a lorry when it is reversing because A. Most lorries are not fitted with mirrors. B. The driver is unlikely to know you are there. C. Most lorry drivers aren't very good at reversing. D. You will need to run, not walk, to get past it in time. The correct answer is B. The driver is unlikely to know you are there. Question 83. How would you expect a well-organized site to keep pedestrians away from traffic routes? A. The site manager will direct all pedestrians away from traffic routes. B. The traffic routes will be shown on the health and safety law poster. C. There will be barriers between traffic and pedestrian routes. D. There is no need to keep traffic and pedestrians apart. The correct answer is C. There will be barriers between traffic and pedestrian routes. Question 84. Which of these tasks does not cause silica dust to enter into the air? A. Sawing wood. B. Cutting stones and blocks. C. Demolition of concrete floors or screeds. D. Sweeping up rubble. The correct answer is A. Sawing wood. Question 85. Someone near you is using noisy equipment and you have no hearing protection. What should you do? A. Ask them to stop what they are doing. B. Carry on with your work because it is always noisy on site. C. Leave the area until you have the correct personal protective equipment. PP. D. Speak to the other person's supervisor. The correct answer is C. Leave the area until you have the correct personal protective equipment. PP. Question 86. After working with noisy equipment you have a ringing sound in your ears. What does this mean? A. Your hearing has been temporarily damaged. B. You have also been subjected to vibration. C. You are about to go down with the flu. D. The noise level was high but acceptable. The correct answer is A. Your hearing has been temporarily damaged. Question 87. The high levels of solvents in some paints and resins can cause A. Headaches, dizziness and sickness. B. Lung problems. C. Effects on other parts of your body. D. All of these answers. The correct answer is D. All of these answers. Question 88. Which of these activities does not create silica dust, which is harmful if breathed in? A. Sawing timber and plywood. B. Cutting curbs, stone, paving slabs, bricks and blocks. C. Breaking up concrete floors and screeds. D. Chasing out walls and mortar joints or sweeping up rubble. The correct answer is A. Sawing timber and plywood. Question 89. Which of the following do you need to do to ensure that your mask works? A. Check it's the correct type needed. B. Pass a face fit test wearing the mask. C. Check you are wearing it correctly. D. All of these answers. The correct answer is D. All of these answers. Question 90. You need special respiratory protective equipment, RPE, to handle a chemical. None has been provided. What should you do? A. Get on with the job but try to work quickly. B. Do not start work until you have been given the correct RPE and training. C. Start the work but take a break now and again. D. Sniff the substance to see if it makes you feel ill. The correct answer is B. Do not start work until you have been given the correct RPE and training. Question 91. Pigeon droppings in nests, which can be hazardous to your health, are found in an area where you are required to work. You should A. Carry on with your work carefully. B. Stop work and seek advice. C. Try to catch the pigeons. 
D. Let them fly away before carrying on with your work. The correct answer is B. Stop work and seek advice. Question 92. There are many kinds of dust and fumes at work. Breathing them in over time can cause you to develop A. Occupational lung disease B. Occupational dermatitis C. Skin cancer D. Sore throat The correct answer is A. Occupational lung disease Question 93. If you use a power tool to cut or grind materials, why must the dust be collected and not get into the air? A. To save time and avoid having to clear up the mess B. Most dust can be harmful if breathed in. C. The tool will go faster if the dust is collected. D. You do not need a machine guard if the dust is collected. The correct answer is B. Most dust can be harmful if breathed in. Question 94. When using water to keep dust down when cutting you must ensure. A. There is as much water as possible. B. The water flow is correctly adjusted. C. Somebody stands next to you and pours water from a bottle. D. Water is poured onto the surface to soak it before you start cutting. The correct answer is B. The water flow is correctly adjusted. Question 95. Which piece of equipment is used with a cable avoidance tool CAT to detect cables? A. Compressor. B. Signal generator. C. Metal detector. D. Gas detector. The correct answer is B. Signal generator. Question 96. In the color coding of electrical power supplies on site, what voltage does a blue plug represent? A. 50 volts. B. 110 volts. C. 240 volts. D. 415 volts. The correct answer is C. 240 volts. Question 97. On the site electrical distribution system, which color plug indicates a 415 volt supply? A. Yellow. B. Blue. C. Black. D. Red. The correct answer is D. Red. Question 98. When overhead electric cables cross a construction site, it is recommended that goalpost barriers should be erected parallel to the overhead cables at a distance not less than a 3 meters, b 4 meters, c 5 meters, d 6 meters. The correct answer is d 6 meters. Question 99. Which of the following is a significant hazard when excavating alongside a building or structure? a undermining or weakening the foundations of the building. B. Noise and vibration affecting the occupiers of the building. C. Excavating too deep in soft ground. D. Damage to the surface finish of the building or structure. The correct answer is A. Undermining or weakening the foundations of the building. Question 100. An RCD, residual current device, must be used in conjunction with 230 volt electrical equipment because it A. Lowers the voltage. B. Quickly cuts off the power if there is a fault. C. Makes the tool run at a safe speed. D. Saves energy and lowers costs. The correct answer is B. Quickly cuts off the power if there is a fault.